Live from the fairway in Natick, it's the 11th annual Candleton Bowling Championship. Competing for the $10,000 grand prize are Topsy Tommy Ost of Sturbridge, who qualified with a 483. Fred Spintig of Stoughton, who qualified with a 447. Danny Murphy of Concord, New Hampshire, who qualified with a 438. Ray McGurk of East Boston, who qualified with a 430. And Lenny Nally of Kingston, who qualified with a 420. everybody here we are back again for the first time at the fairway in Natick but it's our 11th can you imagine that our bowlers are going to go home with some money and also with a tangible souvenir ace trophy company has come up with five wonderful trophies here which will go to all five of our bowlers obviously the largest one will go to the winner he'll get the largest check to ten thousand dollars then we will have in order second place five thousand dollars third place twenty five hundred dollars and the tie for fourth they will share that at twelve hundred and fifty dollars and now to tell you just how our roll-off is going to work, here's the man who's been filling in for me for the last three weeks, the host of Candlepin Doubles, Brian Larry. I don't know, and that tan you've got there, I think you were playing hooky for the last few weeks. Thank I was. It's <laughs> good to have you back. All right, there are five seeds, you know that. The number one seed is Tommy Olsen. He gets to sit here and wait for the first couple of matches. It will tell you about the first two matches that we'll have. The first quarterfinal matches will pit the number five seed, Lenny Nally, against the number two seed, Fred Spintig. And then the next match, Ray McGurk, who was the fourth seed, will take on Danny Murphy, the number three seed. The winners of the quarterfinals will move off to the semifinal round. And the winner of the semifinal, of course, will get to take on Tommy Olsen, two strengths to determine the winner of our $10,000 top prize. Some great bowlers on hand. We should have a great show. we got an hour and a half. Let's get started, shall we? Right after this. Candlepin Bowling is sponsored in part by your neighborhood True Value. Sonny Nally, who throws the first ball in this 11th championship show. For a moment, the four horsemen left side, plus the nine pin, but the two is dropped. Two pieces of wood down in front of the four. Lenny has a league average of 121. High single, 191. High triple, 467. Looking this over very carefully. So he begins with a nine box. <laughs> Lenny comes from quite a bowling family, uh, which uh, I know you know, Brian. He has, uh, seems like everybody in the family is a good bowler. He's got quite a reputation to uphold. All right, he has a spare leave here. I think there have been about five members of the Nally family that have been on the shows, and uh, he's got a younger brother, Lewis, that is the uh, 1986 uh, state midget champion as well. So there'll be another one on the show. That's right. He's, uh, he's here to root also. For a spare? <coughs> no, right down the middle. That's tough. He had the two, four, five, and either side of it, it probably would have gone. So it's a nine and an eight. Here's Fred Spintig. He was second seed with a sparkling 447. His average is 122. He has a high single of 182 and a high triple of 454. One and three with Wood. Plus seven eight. That's pretty. So the first mark. Go ahead, Brian. Well, there it is again. Uh, he has seen a lot of marks on this alley. Remember, he was bowling against Tom Olsen when Tom had his 483 up here a couple of months ago. The fill is six, but it's a split. Two and four, three and six. Oh, he almost pulled it off. He almost pulled it off. 
just missing the three. Fred is married, father of two, works as a shipper for Draper Brothers. Here's Lenny back again. Lenny is single. He works as a jet engine assembler for GE. Looks like a big hit. One more pin. The four pin has two pieces of wood in front of it. some loud screams from one segment of the audience. That must be the Nally section over there. <laughs> there are a lot of sections here. This is quite a crowd. Sure is. Oh. And Lenny has a big nine, and he also has the four pin again. No, no help this time so far as pin placement, but uh, I mean the wood. But he'll look this one over. Baby, a lot of pressure on these guys. Only two of them have been with us before on the championship show, Tom Olsta and Danny Murphy, but even they admit to feeling a lot of pressure the week before. Fred Spintig winds up with a little diamond. That's the five pin, the eight, and the nine. And yes! It goes. His second mark. Both of them spared. Now the fill. It's an eight, but it's a tough split. Five and ten. The five went, but not the ten. It's a nine box. Okay, we're going to take a look at the scoreboard right now, as we usually do after four boxes of this string. And there it is. After four, Fred Spintig Jr., 53. Lenny Nally, 46 with a bonus ball to roll. If you're a cat owner. Lenny Nally on the line right now. And what you see is what you get. This is live, a 90-minute championship show. For Lenny, it's uh, six is the fill on his previous spear. And, of course, three marks in a row. Any combination of strikes or spears in the same string establishes a bonus of $50, just as it does in our regular shows. The other 51 weeks, and he does not quite get it. The nine pin would not go. <laughs> Today in this 90 minute show, you're watching the five bowlers who had the highest three string total in the previous year since our last show. And they are competing for a first prize of $10,000. In the order in which their scores, uh, that is in, in the strength of their score that's how they're seated so obviously Tommy Ulster with his 483 is top seed and he will wait to see what these other four people do to find out who he's going to meet in the two string championship final Lenny just missing a spare lead the 10 Brett Spintig Jr. who was second seed and he's rolling against uh, our fifth seed, Lenny Nally. In the next single string roll off, it will be our third against four. Fred Spinty gets some backdoor action. Everything but number one went down. And he missed it, shaking his head. It's a 10. 
So one pin separating our bowlers right now, halfway through this first string. Be a tough shot, Brian, huh? Nine and ten. Well, he's hoping that that wood will squeeze back a little bit closer to the nine to maybe give him a shot at this. We'll see. Right down the middle, he was thinking along your lines. He was hoping to brush that piece of wood, I think, and get some sidewall action. So it's an eight box. As he uh, hit a piece of wood that was in the gutter. Now a one pin lead for Lenny Daly. Four boxes to go. Four horsemen right side to convert. the one three six and ten looks pretty when it goes doesn't it looks easy but we know it isn't <laughs> all right here's the bonus and he gets seven more this will not be easy as you can see he has the one and three but in the background he has the nine and that's going to be the tough pin unless he gets some sidewall action perhaps well we'll watch can he make it go That was the danger that he would split those two and not get the nine in the back. It's a ten. Jim Lowell keeping score on that big scoreboard today. Fred Spintig Jr. Big hit strike. Six pin, the last one to go down. Well, there's that head pin that had been eluding him in the uh, two boxes before. He's right on at that time for the strike. Almost a spread eagle as he came in on the head pin again, but this time just a little bit too full. Five on the first ball. Seven the fill. So it remains one pin separating the two bowlers, and... Make that now three pins. A three pin lead for this young man, Lenny Nally, going into the final two boxes. And a break as the three knock down the one. The scoreboard has been corrected for any of you who are uh, getting excited about it at the moment, and I'm sure there are some of you, but it is, as I said, a three-pin lead. It's 99 to 96. And, oh, it did not go, and he can't believe it. A lot of wood down there all around that. He has a three-pin lead in this single-string roll-off. Double officials today. We have Ralph Stewart as lob line judge and referee, and also refereeing is Don Riley. Ralph at the lob line, Don Riley behind the bowler. Got a lot of pins there. A lot of pins. There's Ralph Stewart. That's what Lenny is looking at, and I don't blame him for taking his time. The pin is rolling around, but he also is under a lot of pressure because it's a one-string elimination. Is it going to go? What a heartbreaker. What a heartbreaker as that five pin would not go. So it's three successive tens that he's had in the eighth, ninth, and tenth box. Winds up with a 119. And now it's up to Fred Spintig to mark. He must mark. 
and it would seem that any mark would do it because it's only three pins that he has. To there is a spare lead. The four pin with wood. And I I don't think he'll miss that. That's tough wood though. It's it is. It's, it's a out there forward. about a foot or so. Yeah, it could spin. It's a, we can't see from here just how far away it is. He chose to use the other piece of wood, the one on the right, rather than the one in front of him. And that shows his experience. Only an experienced candidate. He needs... There it is. You see it. He needs four pins and a ten box. Nine. So that did it. He's at 124 and 125 plus. If he strikes, it'll be worth $50 in bonus money. did not go down as the piece of wood rolled up against it, but it would not go down. So the first match is over. Fred Spintig advances to the second round by defeating Lenny Nally, 133 to 119. When you come to Meineke Discount Muffler, Ray McGurk of East Boston, who qualified with a 430, will lead it off. shoot which hurt he has four horsemen on the left side in the background the eighth pin over on the right the six and ten and he winds up with how many it's uh, an eight box as you pointed out uh, it was a tough one for I, I mentioned that it was tough for Lenny Nally to miss out on that five pin not dropping but as you pointed out here goes one more. He knocked out every pin uh, between either a spare or ten in those last four boxes. Yeah, he, he couldn't have bowled much better. It's just the just the breaks that you get. One single skinny pin in the back there with three pieces of wood for Ray McGurk to go after. He got it. Spare in the second. Now Danny Murphy. He was one of our two finalists last year with Tom Osta. He had a 438. And that brought him here today. Danny has two pins standing. The two and the five. League average 125. High single 197. High triple 477. Made it. Danny said he brought down about 150 people with him from New Hampshire, and based on the response after knocking out the two and five here, I think he might have underestimated. Good bowler. Six consecutive 400s on our show. Got a break that time because he actually missed the head pin, and uh, he could see himself winding up with a two or a three fill. Said he gets eight. Not the easiest spare leave, I'll tell you that, though, with the one and the nine. Danny's the father of two, part owner of Boutwell's Bolimore. Looking this one over very carefully. <laughs> nope. That's a tough, tough shot. Baby, when they're that far apart and you don't have any wood to help. Now Ray McGurk, and Ray is working on a spare, so this will be a fill. Boy, was he hot the day he came on and rolled that 430. Half Worcester left, one of the most frustrating of all fills in uh, cattle pin bowling. Nice 
Went to the same side and got five more. It's a nine box. Grace League average is 122. His high single is 190. His high triple, 445. All right. He's got the two and the seven with a nice piece of wood right up against the seven. Those are the kind you liked when you were bowling, right, Brian? <laughs> I'd like a few more, I think. <laughs> he couldn't do any better had he gone down there and placed it. Perfect. Yeah. And he made the spare. Now Danny Murphy. This year, Danny qualified with a 438. Last year, he qualified with a 456. It's funny you mentioned Danny uh, losing in the championship last year. You'd think he'd be used to the, uh, the live pressure, but he said he was a nervous wreck all week long, waiting for this day to arrive. Well, I don't blame them, I'll tell you. Any of them. Six consecutive 400s he rolled were 404, 403, 456, 414, 400, and 438. Some kind of bowling. Love to have one of them now, or one third of one of them right now. Right. Okay, the object pin becomes a three. He's got three and six on the right, four on the left. Tough shot, no wood. So now he'll be trying for a 10 box. Every pin important. He's opposite a spare. And he makes the 10. So once again, we'll take a check on that scoreboard. After four, here in the middle string, Danny Murphy, 46. Ray McGurk, 39, with a bonus ball to roll. McGurk against Danny Murphy here in the second quarter final waiting to take on Tom Olster in the two-string championship. And Ray McGurk now throwing a bonus ball on a spare in the board. Boy, is he excited. He's not too demonstrative, is he? The day he won against Jim Putney, he said to me before he went on, he said, I am going to win. Okay. And then rolled a 430. Eight on the first. Looking this one over very carefully. He got it. That's $50 in bonus money. But more important, it puts the pressure on Danny Murphy. There it is again. He's got it going now. Four marks in uh, the first six frames. All right, Danny Murphy now with a spare lead. Five and nine. Yes. Danny trailing by three in the, the completed frames. He's opposite a 20 box. Thin hit. Guess just five. And he gets the right side, but not the left. It's a 10 box. All right, Ray McGurk now with three marks in a row. Already at 79 through six, plus this. He got a break when that 10 went down, and he's got an excellent opportunity for another. And if it goes, remember to keep your eye on Ray McGurk to see his reaction to it. He's had some great reactions so far. He 
piece of wood rolling around a little bit. He made it. He has four marks in a row. Look at those pins go down. Wow. Is he ever hot? Yes. Five in a row. Is he a little excited? I think so. And is Danny Murphy a little anxious? Danny Murphy's going to have his work cut off for him, and he missed right there the head pin. Now with the one, uh, three, six, and nine. And Wood between that three and six. Let's see. No. He's running out of boxes. left side so we're down to the final two boxes and Ray McGurk is red hot up by 26 pins plus what he gets on the next one. Seven more. 33 pin lead right now. Oh man, did you see him make it? Boy, when you're hot, you're hot. Oh boy, check this out, and as tough as it is for Danny Murphy to watch this go, it must be even tougher, too, for Tommy Olster, who knows that he's got guys out there bowling like this, and he hasn't even taken a ball yet. $200 in bonus money, but what a string, 133 right now. Six. Boy, he almost did. <laughs> he almost did move it over. A 149. 149. And congratulations to him from the other bowlers here as Danny Murphy comes up in the virtually impossible position. He needs strike. Can't do it. He needed strikes and lots of them. Nine. Ninety nine. Well, Brian, you indicated he was nervous. I guess he had a reason to be. Well, he said he felt fine today. I don't think he anticipated a 149 being bowled against him. And it's so tough when you're just dealing with one string and you're opposite a couple of marks and know you have to make it up in That's only true. the one string. In the three string, uh, you're absolutely right. You've seen sometimes uh, one bowler get truly hot for one and then the other come back and win the next two. And uh, in addition, win the match. That's why I asked everyone beforehand whether whether it wouldn't be an advantage to get an opportunity to be out there and bowl the first couple of strings instead of getting the bye, but everyone said no, it's so chancy that you can get knocked up. A uh, sensational performance. Tom Oster coming over and congratulating Ray McGurk and commiserating with Danny Murphy.
and the second string is over and Ray McGirt has eliminated Danny Murphy 149 to 109. And because uh, he had the uh, smaller of the two scores, he will lead off, and that will put Ray McGurk in the uh, second position here. <laughs> what a start for Fred Spintig, Jr. <laughs> so two of our five have been eliminated. Lenny Nally and Danny Murphy. <laughs> the first ball. The contrast in, uh, in emotions here. That may hurt. Now let's see whether Ray McGurk can carry over that hot streak. He made $200 in bonus money. That is just secondary to the fact that he has advanced. He also has just guaranteed himself $2,500 instead of $1,250. The kingpin, the five pin. For a spare. Oh, missed it. This is our first show at the fairway here in Natick, and we are very, very happy with our association with Helen Salou and George Salou, who are the proprietors here. They've been the proprietors for a long, long time, an operation started by their father many, many years ago, and they intend to be here for a long, long time. And we hope that our associates, there's Helen, enjoying watching, and uh, we are looking forward to a long association with them here. Fred Spintig, Jr. Spread Eagle. As somebody said, the dreaded spread. <laughs> it's tough, I'll tell you. you. You roll for the head pin and then bango, four pins come out of there and you've got that tough split. And yet you know you did what you wanted. That, that's one of the most intriguing things to me about this game of candle pins because it isn't easy. Well, I was talking to uh, Ray McGurk early on. He said the Arthur D. Little Company back in the 60s did a study. They took uh, 100 shots right at the pocket, and only 60% of the time did everything go down, even though they were perfect shots. It's sort of like something they do now with Iron Byron as far as the uh, golf balls are concerned. Huh? I mean, in other words, it's a controlled type thing. They had a machine uh, take them down, and they just wouldn't go sometimes. So a lot of luck involved. But with these guys, a lot of skill. <laughs> So all you folks out there who can't make spears or strikes all the time, remember that. Be that's consoled. The, that's the excuse I used anyway. <laughs> Ray Amager, up on the line. This third string is to determine who will face our top seed, Tom Osta, in a two-string final. <laughs> he didn't expect that one to go, I don't think. We've got a great crowd on hand here today. Everybody's been real nice to me, and I want to thank them and also all you folks out there who were real nice to me while I was laid up and sent me all those nice cards and things. I appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you back. Good to be back. <laughs> no! It's an eight box. Okay, once again, we come to a spot where we take a check on that scoreboard. After four boxes of this string to determine who will go on to meet Tom Osta, it is Ray McGurk, 42, Fred Spinting, 46 for the bonus ball to row.
big eight. 54. 12 pin lead at the moment. Two pins to knock down. And they are the five and eight. No, sir. How about that wood? Well, that's why he was waiting. He was hoping that that wood would, uh, would get out of the way a little bit, but it hung over a little too close to the five. Nine box. Sometimes the wood can be a friend and sometimes not. Before I forget it, here's a special note to our viewers on Channel 5 in Boston. Two weeks from today, that's September 6, Candleton Bowling is going to move to 10.30 a.m. for the college football season. Next week, however, we'll be on at our regular 12 noon time. That's in two weeks. We'll be going at 10.30 in the morning. I know that, we, you know, we'll get some phone calls and some people are saying, why didn't you tell us you were going to move it? I tuned in and I got football instead of bowling. I'm trying to tell you right now, for the whole football season, it's going to be at 10.30 a.m. That's on Channel 5 in Boston only. You folks in Springfield will see it at your regular time. Nice shot. There it is again, the one and 10. Fred Spintick, four and 10. One, two, seven, and nine. Wood and back. He made it! Take a look at how he made that one. Well, it looked like it was a little bit too far off the head pin. In fact, he was. It was the wood that swung around and got the head That's pin. That's right. And also went over and got the seven. And the fill is five. Four horsemen left side, inside pin, which is the eighth pin. Still has seven and eight left. Made a pretty 10 out of that. Six pin lead for Fred Spintig. $2,500 difference. The winner of this will be guaranteed 5,000 at least because you'll be going into the two string roll off against Tom Osta. The winner of that $10,000, the runner up 5,000. All brought to you by True Value. Nine box. When Fred rolled against Dennis Chick, they tied at 337 apiece. Then they had a two box roll off. Each had a 29. Mm. And then they went into another two box roll off. This time, Fred Spinting defeated his friend Dennis Chick. That's pressure. Well, we've had some the last couple of years here. Uh, last year, Tommy Olsta had to go down to the final box in order to move on to the final round. Ten. All right, the door is open for Ray McGurk. He trails by six, and he's opposite a nine and a ten. Two, four, five, and seven. That's what he's faced with. It did not go. Five and seven still there. He made the 10, picked up one pin. Now the lead is five. Six side by side plus the seven. Get some wood next to the four that might slide over. Yeah, it might. It did. There is a very, very, very big mark. Nice shot, and that wood was a big help. 
Now Fred Spinting for his final two boxes. That is barring a tie. Then we'd have a one box roll off. <laughs> He's waiting to see what that piece of wood, actually two pieces of wood, do. He wants them out of the way so he can have a clear shot at the 10. It's rolling a little bit. Let's see if he can get by it. How is he going to do it? <laughs> Spare in the ninth. hit just four four horsemen right side plus seven and nine they'd love a mark here to try to force Ray McGurk to mark twice himself in the final two but he didn't do it needs every pin 115. All right, Ray McGurk, this is a bonus. Oh, baby! Well, he stepped up there needing 28 pins in his final couple of boxes, and he's got 10 of them already. There's six more. Actually, 20, because the 10 filled out the spare in the eighth. $50 more, and Ray McGurk has done it. Ray McGurk has done it. He advances to the final against Tom Osta, and that will be a repeat of uh, when Tom Osta rolled his 483. That was the last time they met. He gets nine more. Ray McGurk moves on with a 136. And the rest of the people here, plus the other bowlers, are all congratulating Ray McGurk, who has surprised everyone and gets another shot at Tom Osta. And Tom Osta, as we said, when he rolled his 483, defeated the same man, Ray McGurk. There it is in the semifinal, 136 to 115. Ray McGurk eliminates Fred Spinting, Jr. Strings for 10,000. And because it is two strings, and to keep it fair, since there is uh, no defending champion, Tommy Osa will lead off uh, the first. Ray McGurk will lead off the second string. Tom Osa, who qualified with a 483 on the day he defeated Ray McGurk. Tom also with a league average of 130. And he begins with an eight box. High single 209, high triple 496. One seven ten with wood against the seven. A ten. All right, let's see whether Ray McGurk can stay hot. He has been sizzling in two strings. One seven eight. I think there was a, a, a feeling of anticipation that even though that was an almost impossible spare that he might make it. Based on this performance so far. So Ray takes the first lead by two pins.
It's a split, but there's wood. He's looking this one over. That's tough with a four and six side by side plus the 10. This is the type of thing that's been going for him though. Yes. He pulled it off. He pulled it off. I'm not sure if this is, at this point as to whether there's any solid plan as to how to get these bears. They're just going no matter where he throws it. You knew what he was trying to do, but it didn't work for him. And it's an eye. Little too fat on the right. Tom Osta now has gone through four boxes without a mark. Ray McGurk has a spare in the second. And oddly enough, Tom has not had ten boxes but once. Now Ray McGurk, let's see what he can do in filling here. He's the story today so far. A big eight and a spare lead. in a row for Ray McGurk. Wow, a big knock. Oh, is he hot. Oh, is he hot. And look at that wood. Yes, $50 more in bonus money. He's up to $300 in bonus money. It's also the time when we'll pause one more time after four boxes of the first of these two final strings. It is Ray McGurk, 57 with a bonus ball to roll and Tommy Osta, 36. On by at least 21 pins. Looking for his first mark. He didn't want that one to fall. He would have preferred that it had been the second, the uh, number two pin, the, the second one. Let's see if he can utilize the wood, kick over the two, and get the ten. Nope, too full on it. Before I forget it, Tommy wants to send a special hello to Henry D Dion of Derry, New Hampshire. Henry is an avid watcher of Channel 5 Bowling and a great Tom Oster fan. I know that he's pulling for him right now. There's his first mark. Well, it was only a matter of time until that would happen. Tom Oster with his first mark, and it's a big one in the sixth. Another fill for Ray McGurk. This time it's five. One, three, six on the right. Four and seven on the left. No wood. We talked about Tommy Olsen's 483. To give you an idea, if you didn't see it, how big a score that is. If you added Ray McGurk's first two today, you'd have a 285. He would still need a 197 in this string, as well as he bowled to approach the 483 of Tom Olsen. That was a phenomenal, a phenomenal uh, triple that particular day. Spread eagle now for Ray McGurk. He almost pulled it off. He almost did. And he wouldn't have surprised anybody, I don't think. It's just about the only spare leave he hasn't converted yet. What a noise now 
now as Tommy Oster comes up. Work it out, Five on the first ball. Four horsemen left side. And the ten with Wood. This is live. You're watching it as it's happening right now. This is our championship show. $10,000 to the winner, $5,000 to the runner-up in these two strings. He's too full on the head pin. Tommy's been here before in this championship, three times a winner. He's used to coming from behind, too. Uh, last year, he needed a strike in the last box to beat Rich Pedroli in the first round, and then a spare strike in the ninth and tenth to beat John Miller in the second round, and he was down by 11 at one point to Danny Murphy in the championship strings. And here's the story today, Ray McGurk. Ray has, in succession, eliminated Danny Murphy and Fred Spintig while rolling a 149 and a 136. And he leads here over Tom Osta. 15. 15 big pins. Once again, a little too full on the head pin. However, he almost pulled this off, so we'll see what happens. Nope, not that time. Ray so far has picked up $250 in bonus money, but I think when you're shooting for $10,000, the $250 tends to be uh, forgotten. Actually, he's up to $300 now because he picked up another $50 here. All right, Tom Osta now with his final two. He's had only one mark. We're talking a 130 average bowler. You just know that pin's going to roll back again. That's what he's looking at. It has stopped. Can he make it? Oh! The seven didn't go. Ninety two. No, sir, it's not going to go. Too many pins holding it up. Too many pieces of wood holding it up. For a spare, yes. One oh two. Six more. One oh eight. For Ray McGurk. Well, he knows this is a golden opportunity to build a big lead going into the second and final string. He's seen Tommy Olsen before, and knowing that he can make up a pile of pins in a hurry. Seven on the first. Seven, nine, ten. He's made this one time before today. He is the story today. No question about it. It's good for a 10 and a 125 and a 17 pin lead.
One more string to determine who's going to walk away with $10,000, who's going to have $5,000. That's it after one. Ray McGurk, 125. Tom Oster, 108. Oster would lead off the first of these two. Ray McGurk would lead off the second. And that's what's happening. He also leads in the match by 17 pins. And he almost pulled off another great spare. Spare leave with the way the wood is. Sometimes this uh, little triangle can be tough, but he has a piece of wood in there that should help. Nope, he had to hit the first of those pins, which was the three, in order to do it. Ten. Oster can do this time. A little too full. And eight. Now the lead is 19. here was the five pin. It took a while to go, but it finally did go. Ray McGurk. And he has nine and uh, an opportunity to pick up the seven pin for a spare. He just pointed to his head dummy because uh, he had a clear shot at it or he could have used the wood by going further to the right. As it was, he hit the wood in exactly the wrong place. Now, four horsemen left side and inside there is the eight pin. Also a piece of wood, which should help right between the two and the four. But he had to get number one. That's twice now he's missed a key pin. Four successive tens for Ray McGurk. Tom Oster working now on a strike. Nine and ten with wood. And he hit that piece of wood in the wrong place, too. Actually, it should have been further over towards the other end if it was going to get any kind of a bounce off the wood to try to take the nine. He's opposite a 10 box. Four, seven, six, and ten just does not go, but with that wood helping out, it did go. Tommy Olsen now is coming back. Ray McGurk now with the one, two, seven, and ten, and wood. Looking this over very carefully. So good going down there, but the 10 still there. It's a nine box. 
Spare leave is the two, four, five, seven. Nope, missing the two. Nine. Tom Oska. He's trailing in the match at the moment by ten. Here's a fill, which will cut that further. Thin. Very thin. Just three. And the nine matches to nine. It's a seven pin difference. Ray McGurk is fortunate he doesn't have a mark in six boxes, and yet he's only lost ten pins off the lead. Again, Tom Oster, two full. You are right. He's going to have to work to get a nine. <laughs> How about that? after going six boxes without one. Well, it's only fair that Ray should get some help in through the back door as Tommy Oza got some help by the ball coming off the sidewall for two extra pins in the sixth. There's the first bonus ball. Three, four, six. And... Nice shot on the right to get the three, six. But the four is still there. However, a big nine fill. Nine box. Tom Oster trailing by six in completed frames. He's opposite a 19 box. Square leave. Did not get it. Big, 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 big miss there. Nine box. He's down by 16 right now. Well, he needs a mark here. He's opposite at open frame, so this would be the perfect opportunity. Some backdoor action, but not quite enough. One and three. For a spare, yes. Down to the final two boxes. Okay, guys and gals, hang on to your tray tables. <laughs> Ray McGurk has himself almost a strike. He has the five pin to pick up for a spare. Spare in the ninth for Ray McGurk, and he has been the story today. Big spare, and in fact, that forced Tommy Olsen to come up with two marks in the ninth and tenth to try to pull this out. Chance for another. Seven, and he has the one, two, four to pick up for another spare. And, ooh, did not get it. How important will that be? Well, Tommy Three. Olsta breathed a big sigh of relief. He has a chance now. Right. Tommy Olsta, this is a fill on the spare. <laughs> pins right now. He's opposite a 17 box. 
Look what he winds up with. Can he make it? No. Ray McGurk has held on. Ray McGurk has done it. He looks almost bewildered. He does. He's, he's almost saying, did I really win? Well, he's seen Tommy Olsen pull it out so much. I think it, you just expect it, especially when Ray McGurk is the guy that's arm bowled at 483. By but... four pins, by four pins, Tommy Olsen fell four pins shy in that final box. Look at Ray. He really and truly has a look of disbelief on his face. Ray, you earned it. You really did. I mean, you rolled a, a 149, a 136, a, a 125, and a 113. You really earned it. $10,000 to Ray McGurk and a great performance. And again, a great effort by Tommy Osta at the very end when he, it appeared that for a while that he was actually going to pull it out. And except for that one ball that wound up with a 7-10 split. There's the final of the two strings that won it for Ray McGurk. 238 to 234. We'll be back right after this. Today for only $1,250, huh? <laughs> Danny Murphy and Lenny Nally. <laughs> we have a trophy for you. You, you uh, ran into a buzzsaw, huh? Hey, ball well. He deserved the win. He went all the way. I'm happy for him. And you, you, you look like you were going to do it until the very last second. You had your two kid brothers going crazy here. <laughs> Congratulations for making the show and being here. Now, Freddie. Freddie. Sensational bowling, and uh, again, as I said, we had a buzzsaw out there today, right? Oh, I guess. Ray was very hot today. I mean, when, when, you, when you're hot, you're hot, right? He said, I miss a lot of spares, though. Well, I know you did, but listen, we have a little souvenir from the Ace Trophy Company and $2,500, and uh, the opportunity to come back and see us again next year, okay? Oh, All right. Now, let's have our two finalists. Tommy, you knew coming in here you were going to have $5,000, but I don't think you expected that you were going to run into something that you did today, huh? Well, Ray Bold, uh, excellent. What can you say? Uh, he got his revenge on you. I was just <laughs> going to say, he did get his revenge. There was a slight difference between the last time, 483 to 305. Today it was four pins, but I mean, the, the, the point is that he won and you didn't today, right? Yeah, he, <laughs> he was the better bowler today. He was walking home. Happy. Well, listen. Uh, this is this is this is getting to be old hat with you. It's either five thousand or ten thousand that you take out of here. What are you going to do next year? Well, I'm going <laughs> to try to win it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good luck to you. Ray. Ray, you made a believer out of all of us. Oh, unbelievable! Unbelievable! And 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 I who who was asked in the newspaper who I thought would be the finalist, I said Tom Oster. That was based on the last time you guys met. But you, son of a gun, you were just great. Absolutely great. You deserve this big trophy. You get $10,000 plus $300 in bonus money. And the fact that you don't believe it, do you? Huh? <laughs> you absolutely don't believe it. OK. Congratulations to you. An absolutely great performance. And if this was Ray McGurk Day, I want to tell you, it sure was. Thank you. Um, I just can't believe how it worked out where Tommy broke the record against me. And I come back and, and I defeated him for this. I just, it's unbelievable. It's All right, you savor it for a long, long time. We have to run right now. I'll see you next week at 12 noon. And remember, after that, at Channel 5 in Boston, it's at 10.30 in the morning. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>